Thank okay. you. And do you have any written testimony for us? I do not. Okay, that's fine. Um, I did not expect to be testifying here today. Oh, well, thank you for coming in. You're welcome. Um, my name is Attorney Colleen Kerwick. I'm the legal director of We the People Family Preservation. It's a 501c4 company affiliated with the Tea Party. Hey, can I, did you say it was Kerwick because it says Kernick on the paper? It's Kerwick. W-I-C-K. Yes. Okay. And I'm sorry, the name of your foundation, I missed it. It's a We the People Family Preservation. It's family a 501 c 4 organization affiliated with the Tea Party. Um, we've been following the great good work of the task force and we really thank you for the work that you've been doing, bringing to light um, the problems within the system. Um, we also have had, as you know, teams conducting audits um, of various vendors in the family courts in Norwich, in Hartford, in Middletown. The preliminary findings do suggest that there's a systemic problem and a need for transparency. And uh, in light of some of the um, earlier testimony that was given before this task force, I'd like to nominate one of the leaders of the task force, um, Sue Cosno, to explain some of the findings on your audit. I'm sure you welcome the opportunity. Um, I'm, I'm not making you under attack. I'm just saying that I do have your audit book here. Um, you can take it home, and if you want to disclose some of your bills, we can go through them and avoid allegations um, being made against you, which may or may not be founded. Um, again, you can think about that later. Um, our general impression from the systemic audits and the problems that we've seen is that the work of the family court vendors has been slightly counterproductive um, in that a lot of families, it's increasing the conflict um, for a lot of families and the results is bills and debt and bankruptcy and the professionals involved in the cases are not necessarily doing a good job. I don't know if that's sloppiness. I don't know if it's the AFCC allegations. I don't know that, but we would like to have a look at the bills and we would like to have a look at some of the results. Um, a suggestion that we have, we're an international organization, is to um, flatten the family court system. Um, we believe it's that broken. And to look at other jurisdictions which have worked better. And the model that we have come back to is the Scandinavian model. Um, if you look at the Swedish um, family court system, they've taken it out of the family courts. Um, they have shared parenting, 50-50, um, and they go to social workers to divide that time. It's a system where there is, in litigation, it's a 2% involving family law. In America, it's 50%. So the actuarial results show that it's um, a very successful system. And I'm willing to share our analysis of the Scandinavian system with you. If you would like, I can give it to any of the members of the task force uh, later on, either tonight or tomorrow. Is that it? That's it. Thank you very much. Oh, go ahead, Ms. Merrill. I also am complimenting everyone who finishes before the ding. So <laughs> thank, thank you. you. Am, am I understanding correctly that you're asking for bills, or what, what, are, you, what are you doing? You're yes, asking? We're, well, there, there have been a lot of allegations made against various family court vendors, and I would imagine or hope that when those allegations are made that people that those allegations have been made against are going to welcome the opportunity for transparency to clear their name. Mm -hmm. And we would like to have some bills, and we've got teams in place that can go through them. Um, unbiased people, uh, I've never met Sue Cosmo before, I don't know anything about her, um, and I was one of the people to supervise her audit. Um, there are some concerns in there, and we would like to have them addressed, and the only way we can do that is if there's full disclosure. Have you read our um, statue, statue, the bill that was put forth as as our, what we're supposed to be looking at and studying? You know, I did not expect to be testifying here today. I got a call from Elle Wilson at National, who's dying with leukemia. She could not be here, and she asked me to come down. Because um, we've been um, having our meetings since October, and uh, since October, I've been very vocal that I would like to see an audit of some of the GAL bills and invoices, and I have been told verbally and in emails, that that information would not be useful, okay? So I'm not quite sure how you are going to get a copy of someone's bills from our task force when we can't even follow the law that was written with our responsibilities. Do well, you understand what I'm saying? Well, I, we had felt, and there's 3,000 people within our organization internationally, um, we had felt that as a leader of the task force, um, the leader should lead by example and start by disclosing your bills 
um, so that other people who are not on the task force can come forward with theirs too. So instead of us sneaking around in your court files, calling people who were once your clients, that you can work with us um, instead of against us so that we can clear your names and we can figure out what's going on here. Mr. Detano. I have a question. I'm, I'm somewhat confused. Did you do an audit or you yes. didn't do an audit? Yes, we have been doing an audit, but we do not have 20% of the bills. The problem is that um, with the audit we have, uh, I'll give an example. On August the 24th of 2009, uh, Sue Cosno had billed 2.4 hours in one case, and she was in court on six cases that day. The Middletown Court was not open for 14.4 hours on August the 24th of 2009. Um, I've got pages of this. So, uh, so basically, that's, no, that's, that's the concern of triple billing, no, my, and we my, would like to have bills so that we can correct that, that concern. I, I'm trying to clarify your testimony, which is you were doing some audits, but you haven't done a full audit. You'd like to do an audit, correct? Ex we have done preliminary audits on the information that is available to us. We would like to have full information so that allegations are not made against people which are unfounded. Because right now, the, the results of the audit do not look good for people. And we can clarify that with more information. But how can an audit be complete if you don't have all the information? I don't We're not going to be able to get 100% of anybody's bills. I will say for the record, I've said it before, I'll say it again, I'll say it to anyone who listens to me, I've never billed people for the same amount of time. Just because someone's name appears on a short calendar list for that day doesn't mean anything happened in court that day. I, so, I, so the fact that you think I had six cases doesn't mean I had six cases. And frankly, I have never double, triple, or any other bill b besides the exact time that I spent. And that's exactly the information that we want. And your you bills just to got it. Thank you very but much. We would like to see your actual bills to show that, as opposed to the information that we have in front of us, which does not look so great. How many audits have you started? We've started about 20 in Connecticut. Um, they've been going around in other parts yeah, of the country, good. too. And, and, can we, I'm sorry. and can we see the, the, those audits? Well, they're in the preliminary stages, and we don't want to be making allegations against anybody. We just want to have more information. So you mean any more happen. allegations? No, I'm, I'm not making an allegation. I'm saying that there are some concerning results that we believe can be clarified with more information. Can I raise a matter, just a different matter altogether from the okay. billing uh, issue? Uh, uh, bill. You referred to the Scandinavian system as, as if there's one country called Scandinavia that's, and there's well, actually four or five different countries yes, that are involved. Yes, there are. Involved. That's, that's absolutely um, correct. Is it, is it the Swedish system in particular that you're looking at? Or yeah, there, those countries tend to have a good grasp of the family court system and, and the Swedish system is, is the one that we have been looking at as opposed to Norway or Denmark. Or Finland or, yeah. But w uh, were there specific things about the Swedish system that you wanted to bring to our attention? Yeah, I would like to print it. It's, there's a huge amount of information on it. It was revamped a few years ago, and it has proved on an actuarial standpoint to be very successful. And we can get you that information if you want, as opposed to discussing it here today. Okay. Thank you. Okay, I, I just wanted to read this to you, because I've been, I've been trying to get this information since October, and I've been... Um, prevented from getting it, the task force, but let me read this to you. In addition to our three charges, such studies shall include but not be limited to an examination of state statutes applicable to an action involving the custody care and upbringing of a child and the costs associated with contested divorce actions including but not limited to expert witness fees, attorney's fees, including the fees of guardian ad litem and attorneys for minor children. Such study may include recommendations for legislations on matters studied by the task force. We have been meeting since um, October, and I haven't been able to get this information, so I really don't understand how you're going to get it. And let me just give you, I don't know if you're we've aware been, of this. We've been calling um, clients of people. Here's, here's, a, here's a response to getting this information. Why do you automatically assume to know my position? The problem is that unilateral action such as this in the name of the task force is disrespect disrespectful to the members of the task force, the process, and the chairs. We are a group, and we should discuss and decide together what action should be taken. My opposition is to one or a few members hijacking the process for their own agenda, not that of the task force. Now. We don't have an agenda when we're trying to follow the law. Here's another one.
we should, um, let's see. This information would not be found to be useful for our cause. And I'm not going to get into all the, the rest of the emails. But these are exchanges back and forth from our, our task force regarding um, the ability to get some of this information out. Because as we heard today, there are so many parents that are devastated financially and are being bankrupt emotionally and financially. And we as a task force can't even do our job because we have three weeks left and we still haven't gotten any bills. Okay, the only way that we can find out is by the public. And then, then what we hear is there's two sides to every story and we hear that, um, you know, that's not accurate. And so what are we gonna do? We have, we have task force members that need this information so that we could see how widespread this problem is. And for all these people to show up, it's, it's amazing. But we don't have all the information. So this task force was set up to fail from the beginning. And you're not going to get that information. I guarantee you. Well, if, if we're not going, if that information is not going to be disclosed by the leaders of the organization, and we would request, and this is a request from we the people, um, that uh, Sue Cosmo step down, and either Linda Allard or Jennifer Berenold or Tom Weissmuller take her place. Um, Let me say, uh, on November 8th, I sent an email to the whole task force. And I said, is it possible to receive the following information as it relates to the 1,357 GALs having been appointed between July 2012 and June 2013? Number one, name of each GAL appointed to each of these cases, a copy of all their bills to show their billing practices, fees per hours, what they are billing, parents, total billed, et cetera. Number three, I believe it was mentioned yesterday that these were not abuse and neglect cases. Number four, the 1357 cases does not include cases that have had GALs appointed in previous years and are still on the case. Therefore, the number of GALs representing parties in fiscal year 2013 is probably a lot higher. We would like to say, I, I rec request the same information for the AMCs. Since we are not having another meeting until November 26, perhaps we can share information, documents, and Dropbox program so that we can all access this information. Due to our time restraints, I believe it would be best to send a mass email to all GALs and AMCs in the state that we are requesting this information. They can all place in Dropbox, which is a free program, which can expedite the process. Any thoughts? Guess what? We did not request that information. And then when Minnie Gonza Representative Gonzalez requested that information, on the 24th of December, the family bar chair sent out an email saying that, you know what, you can do it if you want, but you don't have to. So what I'm saying to you, colleague, what makes you think that you're gonna be able to get this information when the law states that we should be able to study this information and we can't get it? Um, I think that you're just pointing out that there's a problem with the task force and there's a problem with the system in, in that it's set up for failure if people aren't going to be willing to lead by example and produce their bills. Um, one of the biggest problems that families are incurring is that the, the vendors that are supposed to, supposed to be given professional advice to help families are doing more to hinder them because the costs are so excessive. It's driving them to bankruptcy, they're losing their homes, they're losing their livelihoods, they're losing everything. My question to you is, are we gonna allow that? You know. It, it, it will, I hope not. <laughs> I, well, the thing is, is it depends on the people that came here today and testified. All those problems, or, or you know, we have people in the audience crying. We got people that testified and they were crying. And it depends on us, and shame on us if we don't do anything, if we sit down and allow this task force and, you know, to, to fail. I think there's the people in Connecticut that one day are having the problem, that they, they, they are losing everything. It's, it's, it's on them, you know, to get together. And, and this is just the beginning. Yes. This is just the beginning. And I don't, I, my opinion is that we're not going to stop this. You know, we're going to keep on and on until we find some solution because this is not fair. Here's my last sentence from an email from one of our task force members. There has been no decision made by the task force as a whole, but it was, it was decided that we could study it 
according to the Judicial Committee who wrote the language of the bill. As a whole, to solicit this information, and the information solicited is unlikely to provide any useful and comparable data. So I ask you, how are you going to get this information? What we have been doing to get the information we have is unfortunately having to turn around and call clients. We have had to go into courts, go through files, pull out as much bills as we can, and cross-reference them for dates. Um, some of the results came out that look questionable. Uh, according to Attorney Cosano, um, she has a legitimate explanation, and I want to give her that opportunity to explain herself so that her name is not slandered. I just want to, th there's a lot of different ways to do research. And it's just much easier if people uh, disclose their information. There's a lot of different ways to do research if we want to make sure it's a valid study, and we need to, as mm -hmm. a task force, agree on that research and how we're going to, there's methods to it so that we can have confidence that what we come Absolutely. up with as outcomes is going to be something that is valid <laughs> and people Absolutely. can have trust in, not just willy-nilly stuff, and Absolutely. not that you're doing willy-nilly stuff, but we need to, as a task force, agree on the procedures, the methods, how we're going to do the statistics. There's a lot of things that go into a research project such as what we're trying to accomplish. I no one ever said that we shouldn't do something. Yes. The question is you decided and other people decided to do it your way versus no. a task force no. way. I agree with you a thousand percent. That's why I came up here and I said, we're trying to do this grassroots audit. We're going to court files. We're calling people. We're getting some bills. Isn't it better if you actually organize the audit and you set the parameters and you disclose the bills and you work with us instead of having it parent against vendor? We, we do have, I think in, in fairness to everyone on the task force, um, we do have some ongoing dialogue about that. I put in a, an email as well about how we might at our next meeting, and we haven't had uh, the opportunity to have that meeting yet because we had the holiday break, that um, we will at least raise it by motion to address how we might examine the issue because we did receive feedback from the Bar Association or a representative from the Family Bar Association. I responded to that email by saying basically we will, might have been more than one representative I guess, we should look at that um, as a task force and I, I copied everybody I believe saying that at, at our next meeting, not this one because this is a public hearing, we will attempt to address um, just a discussion in general on how we might examine fees. We've, we've, we've had dialogue on it in the past. Um, and we've, and I think we've referenced this earlier, um, and we've been disappointed by the inability of the computer system at the courthouse to assist us. And, and we do not have, we've not fully discussed the idea of, of trying to approach the guardian ad litems. Um, Representative Gonzalez did that, um, but until we do it as a task force and have an opportunity to discuss it in a meeting, we probably can't answer any more questions on this issue, I would think. That's fine, I look forward to um watching your next meeting and I hope that some resolution can come to this issue for everybody's sake. I would like to Tom did. I did when I had and I sent a questionnaire. Um, I did have a conversation with the Speaker of the House uh, because you know some members here especially you know the coaches they were they criticized me for that uh, and the response was that did nothing illegal um, and I as a state representative I do have the right to, to ask questions and send a questionnaire. So he says nothing. It's nothing that you didn't do nothing wrong. I gave him my questionnaire. He read all the questions and he said, I don't see nothing wrong with that. You have the right and nobody can try to. And, 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 and as a member of the task force, but as a state representative, I do have the right. So me personal, I don't care what people said, if they, if they, they complain or not. I didn't do nothing wrong. And I feel good about it. Well, thank you so much for all the great work that you're Rep doing. Representative Gonzalez, I trust that you will be sharing any responses that you received which you had sent to your personal legislative email address with every member of the task force since you, you indicated that you were asking on behalf of the task force. And Ms. Ms. Kerwick, I would like to just clarify something. You um, are the last of a, a number of previous speakers who refer to guardians ad litem who are private uh, practice attorneys appointed in these cases as vendors. We are not vendors. We do not submit bills to the judicial system. There are people who uh, may be, I suppose, considered vendors. For example, if you have a state contract with the Office of Chief Public Defender, you submit 
uh, bills, I suspect, and would be considered vendors. But for the private pay attorneys who were appointed by the court, we are not vendors and should not be referenced as such. Um, uh, I was just speaking generally with regards to therapists and guardian you're, you're, and psychologists. None of us are vendors. We are all, we are all in private practice. We are all in private practice. We are not paid by the court. We don't submit bills specifically to the court with the expectation that the state will pay us. And there seems to be a, a growing effort to consider us all as vendors, and I would like to uh, you know, just clarify the fact that we are not vendors for the state. Thank, thank you for that. I actually and, meant vendors for the parents. Okay, the and also I want to say that I will, I will read this. This is my letter. On behalf of Connecticut Task Force to study legal dispute involving the care of custody of minor children, I didn't, I didn't say, you can read either or, because I didn't say on behalf of the members. I didn't say on behalf of the members. So you can read either or, whatever you feel like. Okay. Thank you. Uh, yeah, yeah, and I would like to say one last thing is that all due respect, Tom, I know you sent a, a, an email out regarding the, um, the inquiry on fees. I sent that out November 8th, okay? And I got one response from one person saying that there's no need for this information and then no response from the other. And that was back in November. We have three weeks left. Jennifer, I'm going to jump in here and say this is not this is not on our agenda today. Okay, and so, so this is something you. we need to save for a task force okay. meeting. And in fact, I, sure. at this point, we're going to take a five minute break here. Okay, Colleen, we'll would you agree to, that this we'll is going to be impossible? Five minutes, honest. Would you agree this is going to be impossible to get this? In